A lot of you have been asking for a base defense video of sorts. I don't necessarily have the time, the tech, or really even the expertise to do a really high detailed in-depth analysis. I figured I'd do a bit of a just click through talking about a few aspects that are important in my base right now. And as you'll see, I don't actually have the Saw Factory and we're also supposed to be getting a new defender. I believe called the Badger in the raid next week. So that is of course going to change a few things. So Saw Factory and Badger, the defender hole, are going to make things a little bit different than what is happening right now, but there are still a few pretty good tips and takeaways that I can actually give, um, especially if you are a somewhat lower level player. And I just want to talk about a few aspects of PvP. The first thing to realize is that everyone pretty much is using this hole in their base defense fleet, the Overlord Carrier. Because it has a slowdown aura, which is a range of about 60 if I change my patrol range down to about that, everything in this ring of 60 is going to get slowed down when you're near. So if there is an exterminator that comes along attacking your base, it's going to get slowed down right about in this white ring or a little bit smaller than that, and it's going to get hit by a few of the turrets that I have here, and I have mountains here built up to protect this because a lot of weapons such as the exterminator, Gatling, or the Gatling gun on the exterminator, whatever that, that's called, the abolisher Gatling gun, as well as weapons from the ballistic weapons from trenchers and whatnot, do not fire over these mountains. But of course, your turrets do not either. Things such as the Hellswarm will still shoot over these, or even the Basilisk, although the Overlord itself is fairly protected against the Basilisk. But we'll come back to that later. So the one takeaway I have for you, the first one here is an Overlord carrier is really, really powerful. Looking at the rest of my base, I'm using mostly just heavy turrets. I do have four of these regular Drax Scatter 2s out in front, and they're dealing not a whole ton of damage. They maybe tickle a few of the tier 10 ships a little bit, but really not very helpful against any, any of the attacking stuff in today's game. It's mostly just heavy turrets, which are all directional. Is that the best thing ever in the world? I don't really think so, but it is what it is, and I don't really have any power to change any of that. My other regular turrets do include a glacial right here, which is supposed to slow people down and increase their reload time, or increase increase their reload time by a little bit, as well as I do have one uh, ECM, a light countermeasure turret, and it's supposed to be helpful a little bit against Basilisk, but it really doesn't do all that much. Then of course, everything else are these power transformers up here, which are just equipped with this PT transformer. It takes 120k, gives you 160k, so it's a net 40k increase. As you can see, I still actually have a fair amount of base power saved up, even though I'm not really you know, doing everything I possibly could to save those. I still do have one harpoon and all these regular turrets and stuff. I could easily scrap those if I needed to, and I wanted to put on the Bastion Seawolf 2s. Because, as you will notice, um, well, before I do that, I'll sum up point number two. Point number two is you really want to focus on only your heavy turrets. In terms of your heavy turrets, in today's exact game, there are a few things that are actually worthwhile. The oldest one of these is the Decimator, and I just have these built up with a fairly good ballistic damage heavy build. And the armor on this could probably change route a little bit from the tier 7 stuff up to the tier 9 stuff. I'm just too lazy to change it. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Decimators are pretty good. They do not fire over mountains. And they are short range. As far as my other short range turrets, I do have the Bathill Scattergun or Depth Charge turret. And this one does actually have the right armor. I cared enough about this one. And it does 14 millionist damage before you do all the crazy math and the, and the deflections and the salvo and what have you. But it's pretty good and it's splash and short range gunfire does not shoot over mountains. I've got most of these working in association with the Overlord Carrier Filled. Those are my two short range turrets. As far as my long range turrets, most of these are still the Armageddon Scattergun, which is not set up in a great place. It's blocked by mountains too much. I need to shift things over a little bit more to the left here so they shoot down this channel so someone with a Hellswarm can't stop right here and just kill my Overlord Carrier. But that's a little bit of a different story. Anyway, these Armageddon scatter guns are just built in with a whole lot of corrosive damage. They're long range, they're pretty helpful. The projectile speed is really high on these guys, which is, you know, what you want. You need this to land on the enemy ships as quickly as possible. 
I also do have one of these tier 10 turrets, it's the only one I have right now, and you do need a level 12 platform for this one, all the others fit on level 11 perfectly fine. And this again has lots of projectile speed, which I don't know if that's super helpful, as well as having radioactive isotopes for the radioactive damage and radioactive accuracy, which well helps out a lot. And then radium reserves helps out here for supercharge, making this thing do more damage. There might be a slightly better build for this one. Let me know if you have one and I'll see what I can do to change this around so it's a little bit stronger. But as far as the research I've done, this is actually pretty good. I haven't compared the exact damage comparing this one to the Armageddon Scattergun. I think they both have their uses in a base here. And I think this actually does shoot over mountains, um, but I want to definitely double check on that one. Then I still have one of these mongoose hanging out here. I don't know how much longer that will stay. It will probably turn into one of those tier 10 launchers fairly quickly once I get around to making that change. So that's summing up uh, point number three, I guess, is how to equip a few of your uh, heavy turrets that actually do damage in today's game. Let's now shift to talking about a guard fleet, and this will probably change when we get the badger. I've got no idea what to expect with that thing. I don't know how it will look when it's actually put into the game. I'm just using four gatekeepers because, quite frankly, the piranhas that I have don't really work very well. They have not enough debuff. Their, their main weapon is uh, the forge fire thrower here, as well as their built-in one. That just makes the enemy ships a bit slower and a bit weaker, but their deflection debuff isn't really effective versus exterminators, which most people have three of at this point. Again, I expect that limit to go up to five. I have actually legitimately no idea when, that, when to expect that to happen. But this max deflection here of looks like it's about 150k, 300k, doesn't do a lot depending on damage type to my hull because this thing has 200,000 deflection. It, it really is just not doing a whole ton. It takes too long and dies too quickly, even with a pretty good build here. So yeah, I'm really just using four gatekeepers. Are four gatekeepers the best? No, but it is the best option that I do have. A really, and let's go ahead and move on to the next point here, which is how to stop exterminators. And that is through tier 7 EMP ships. What do I mean by this? Well, the Warden, the Siren, and the Curator, a few other holes, do have the ability to equip a tactical module, which is EMP overload. They have very few armor points on them in total, 3.8 million, but this thing triggers every 700,000 armor points and essentially splashes the attacking ships, which is really, really helpful for the exterminator missile. If I were to take this hole, and let's just recall my guard fleet so I can place it somewhere that makes sense, I want to place this, this tier 7 ship, and I can't actually use this exact one because this is a flagship and I still want to use my overlord carrier. I want to stick this somewhere about here. It doesn't really matter what's on the ship, probably best to have a countermeasure ship of some sort. But this means that when the enemy ships do come sailing down the channel, the exterminators, they've got their range ring, which is, you know, about 100 for their regular Gatling gun, but then it extends past that and has a longer version for the exterminator built-in missile, which will default prioritizing ships. That means if there's an exterminator down this channel, about where this oil rig is here, it will go off and shoot at this, at my tier 7 stun ship and do a whole bunch of damage to it. And this means that my ship dies, but the exterminator here gets stunned in for, let's go ahead and check the stat block here. Roughly speaking, it looks like the stun duration is 12 seconds. Of course, that's going to be reduced about half or in a third based off the stun resistance of the enemy ship. You essentially stun them in place for about four or five seconds just based off them sailing down the channel and, park and, and shooting at where that ship is. I don't necessarily enjoy that or think it's the best, and of course you want to protect it through an anti-rocket turret, which um, just stick one of those in there on the water and it should do okay. And that's generally what you want to try to do to give your base a little bit of an edge versus exterminators. I'm sorry I don't really have a build for you, there's nothing too special about there. Just try and get super high projectile speed for your countermeasures, a countermeasure special, and then a whole bunch of evade. I don't actually have one because I don't really even own the blueprints. I don't have 30 days to build a ship like that. I didn't participate in tier 7 PvP, so I can't really help you out too much there with, with that stuff and knowing exactly how things work because it does get kind of complicated. Of course, we can also talk about the different portals that we are using. Um, I have, a, have 
portal level four, which means that I need to upgrade that, which takes 18 days per portal with an officer. And to do that, oh, I need to do that first before I need to equip the Bastion Seawall 2s, which give you way more armor points than the regular one. It would go up to 125 million total, which is, you know, pretty exciting. That's a lot of health. With the gatekeepers to buff them, they live for a little while longer, but they they really are still not absolutely the best. And they are, I mean, they're, they're going to slow down ships slightly. Your goal as a defender is to make people slow down and stop through stuns, through the overlord field, through giving them massive armor point structures to hit through so that your turrets have time to kill them. All right, so that's a little bit of a talk about portals and how you should just be using the highest armor point stuff you can. Maybe with gatekeepers or if you use gatekeepers, make your portals tougher. And if you want to equip stuff like the, uh, make them tougher like this armor, that helps out a tiny bit. 60k deflection versus whatever damage the exterminator is doing is not super helpful. And of course, these uh, weapons on here don't really matter. It's just supposed to help you defend against basilisks. Also, we need to talk about the Basilisk range, which is roughly speaking 200. If I put in a ship, although it might be closer to 180 or whatnot, if I put in a ship and I pull up the patrol range up to 192, I believe is actually the correct number. Um, you can't actually really get there exactly, but you can get pretty close. You'll see that my base is somewhat snipeable in a few locations, but not every location. So the Overlord's patrol range is set at 195, which is about the range of a Basilisk. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about what it can and cannot hit. If you park it off on the left side here, although things do look a bit weird, you'll notice some of this stuff is snipeable, which I'm sort of okay with. There's nothing super important along these turrets right here, um, which is whatever. You can kind of snipe some stuff. You can also look at the very top of my base. There are these three turrets right here in the center. That's my dock, not my ship. There are, you know, three turrets right here in the in the center that are snipeable, and someone did grab me with those. It's definitely not a perfect base. I like to offset these so when ships are in the channel, things are still shooting at them. The long-range turrets are still shooting at them, other than the short-range turrets only. That's something a bit off-meta I tried to do. Of course, over on the side here, I made it you can't really snipe anything. Maybe one decimator or one over here, but the ships and the portals, the main two portals, are all, are all, are all out of reach. And then the Overlord does really well against Basilisks, so you probably don't need to worry about that too much, even if the Overlord itself is snipeable. I also have played a dirty trick over on the right side. I stuck one of my key buildings on the outside for five tiles away, so people have to spend another 30 seconds or minute coming around the outside if they miss it. I don't like how that exists and it's a feature inside the game, but while it is, I'm going to take advantage of that. Of course, you can do a few other sneaky things I used to do in the past, like take your radio tower, scrap it, rebuild it at level 1, and hide it sort of behind the walls or whatnot, where it's hard to see. The last thing I will touch on, which is pretty important, is a few of the, of the tactical modules I am using. TSM actually did a really good video talking about a few of these, but I'll just go over the ones that I use. First of all, and let's actually go into the equip mode, not into the blueprint mode, that's not what I want to show you is that I'm using the EMP Blast on most of my labs. You can see that this has a bonus effect, which uh, gives you a bit of a stun. Let's go ahead and move the screen up a little bit so you can see. Is that you have a stun effect of 3 seconds. Of course, that's before it gets debuffed to about 1 second with the uh, bonuses for the stun resist across the enemy attacking holes. And it affects ships in a range of approximately 100, but again, it's a tiny bit more complicated than that. I've thrown those on pretty much all my labs, that way if someone sails down the channel, they shoot at all of these, it slows them down a little bit, it gives a chance for my longer range turrets to do a little bit more damage to them. I also have that on my warehouses, along with warehouses have the RB1 reload buffer, which is supposed to just reduce their reload by 50% for the, the main specials, um, just put it on warehouses, and that has a range of 130. If you put it on the outpost, you get the bottom effect, which gives you a, a reload buff. It's a smaller reload, reload buff of, of 20%, but it applies map-wide unlimited range rather than the stronger, more concentrated short-range stuff. That's something I have done with this RB1 reload buffer across a few of my different warehouses. Of course, it's also important to have fire support too, affecting any of your turrets. So I've got that um, on my warehouses, on my outpost, being around the um, 
the turrets, so everything in my base, all my actually heavy turrets that do damage are affected, and it's just increasing the damage by about 20%. I've got that on this warehouse, this warehouse, this warehouse, and the outpost. Some of these might be overkill, it doesn't stack or anything. I just want to make sure if something dies, a few of these turrets are still covered by something else. You also saw I do have the Ion Storm Accelerator on this warehouse, the back one on the right, as well as the outpost. This gives you an effect of making things immune to stun and slow, and also increases your projectile speed, which is helpful for hitting holes more quickly. So there's my option for you there. Um, you know, it just helps you, it makes you immune to stuns, immune to pinches, which is pretty helpful. I'm probably missing some uh, anti-rockets. I should have some by my portal so people can't just rocket those. I definitely need, need, need to equip a few of those in my base here, but it's a mistake I'm realizing right now. I think that's almost it. Um, a few other notes I will leave you with is that you, of course, want to change your faction to make sure you're doing the most damage of whatever type you have in your base. If I clear this turret, you'll see I have plus 20% corrosive damage. That is from my, from my faction I chose on my outpost, the Scourge faction. So that helps my corrosive damage right here. I don't actually remember if there's a concussive one, but I'm doing a lot of concussive damage as well. I don't think there is. But you can change to Forsaken, do plus 20% ballistic damage, something like that. Just trying a few things here to just kill people a little bit more quickly. Of course, my Saw Factory is st still building to level 1. I'm not going to coin this thing, so you'll have to come back a little bit later in two days or whatnot, and I'll talk about those a little bit more. As of now in the game though, there are two different types of mines, which has a, um, you know, there's a large mine about the size of your retrofit lab in terms of its footprint, so it can't fit in your channel in a normal 2x2 two two square, and that reduces the enemy combat speed as well as their or actual, it reduces their, their, it increases their reload time, and also um, reduces their range. So that's a larger mine. You can pop down at the very front of your channel or make a 3x3 area or maybe stick it at the end here. Probably not too helpful there. That's supposed to make enemy holes weaker when they're already in range of your turrets is the idea. Then there's also one more the size of an oil rig, which is a green one. That's a corrosive 20 million damage, I believe. Might be off on that number. I obviously don't have mine built yet, so can't check. But that, you just plaster and move it in places where ships are going to drive, or in your channel, at the back here, at the front, around the sides here. Just stick those there, and that can help you bring down almost a ship's worth of, worth of health, if that does work. Alright, so this has been more of just a straight talking through video. It has been quite long, because base defense is a bit complicated. And of course, my base is not perfect, as you see, things are literally repairing right now. I'm also not in the position where I want to or can coin all my things to max defense. If you do that right now and literally coin everything, you're going to have quite a strong defense. If you don't and you're more like me and you focus a little bit more on these lab upgrades for PvE rather than the portals and stuff for PvP, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to keep everyone out. Hopefully this video was able to be quite helpful. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and share it with your alliance. I think that these videos, I just make them to help people, you know, everyone in the game. If you watch these, if you don't, whatever. But I just hope that it was helpful. Alright, well I think that's all I've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, this is Derpy, signing out, helping you be a better pirate.